I was very fortunate to be given a Jegu G90 transceiver with uh, 20 watts of output. It needs a power supply, so I used a PC one, but that looks a bit junky. So I made a box and put a different power supply uh, under the Jegu, the same form factor box. Then I found there's a little uh, cup kind of speaker reflector, which is very useful. But then, of course, we all want more power, so I had to make a power uh, amplifier. I think it's 100 watts about max it gives, which uh, has an integrated low-pass filter. Then, of course, once you've got an amplifier, you need an antenna tuning unit. So then, of course, then you've got to add in the data modes, and it all gets quite tall. But none of this is any good without an antenna. A simple yet effective antenna is what's known as the inverted V. It's essentially a dipole, which means there are two sides to it, two pieces of wire which are not connected together. Uh, they connect to either side of the coax, one connected to the outer braid, the other one to the inner copper piece. And that needs to go up in the air on your pole, as high as you can get with the bottom parts cut to exactly the right length, and that will tune it to the band or the frequency that you're interested in. One day, while trimming some wires to the right length, I had the idea. Couldn't you make each side a variable length, so you could just change the length of it and tune it to whatever frequency you wanted? One way to find out, I built up an inverted V antenna made out of two tape measures, 7.5 metres long each, using some pulleys and some string. Uh, it had a slight downside though, unfortunately. In a great QSO with VK3XXY, he mentioned he'd uh, built several uh, cat's whisker style antennas, which is essentially an inverted V, but with two elements each side instead of one, each element on a different band. So I thought, what's the difference between that and one of these? Today I'm going to have a go at making this antenna, so what I'm going to need is a bit of wood, about two and a half metres of that pole, a lump of aluminium, uh, some of these wheels I found on a piece of furniture somewhere in the bins. A pile of these metal pulleys, chock block, a couple of worm drive motors, uh, I think they're from Amazon possibly, or maybe eBay, and a big pile of fishing wire. It says 38 kilograms, seems quite thin. Okay, oh yeah, what else? Whole big massive pile of stainless steel wire. I think it's stainless, it's been out in the uh, rain and it's not gone rusty, so I'm hoping. Okay, let's go. All I want is the uh, plastic bit off a couple of these. You'll see why in a minute. Nothing like brute force. And ignorance. Needs a bigger hammer. Much better. Right, so that's those. They were the uh, plastic outer parts of these wheels. So he's got to go on there. Just need to get a hole in that. Take it down a bit so it can become a pulley. Get the wheel on the end. Do that twice. Then we're getting somewhere. For those who are not uh, au fait with all these technical terms, this is what's known as a rotary cock-up machine. There is a rotary thing, and in there you put the good stuff, and with this piece and this piece, you cock it up. Just pouring a 6mm hole through the cylinder at the moment. Done. 
So there's the basic idea. This will serve as the actual antenna. Uh, which goes through a pulley, bit of a guide, pinch roller, drive roller with this geared uh, motor at the back. That's only 12 volts, not a stepper. Another guide, another one of these guys. So here we go. It works! <laughs> so, there's the finished uh, antenna pole. So you've got the pulleys, guide, motor, pinch roller, guide, and other one. Now I've got to go and get it up there. Because that's the highest point I've got. So, antenna's up. There's a piece of wire around this post goes to the first pulley which is hanging on to the uh, nylon fishing uh, fishing line which goes up there where we start to see some cable right up to the top there where we've got the pole and the pulleys the motors didn't work out very well uh, one of them broke and I didn't have a spare one so I thought right I can pull the strings by hand and, uh, and move between the bands that way at least that will prove the idea and I believe I do have string pulling technology. To move between the bands easily, I marked the fishing uh, line at the various places where it was resonant on each of the bands. This is the range from 5 MHz to 30 MHz with me running from either side of the antenna and pulling the strings out to the next band. Well, the results certainly impressed me, especially for a piece of cable, some fishing line and a few pulleys. Multiband high Q antenna, very low cost, lightweight and very simple to construct. Uh, if you've ever seen anything like this before, please let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching, 73s!